Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Well, as you know, slimline cards are all the rage now, and Spellbinders has come out with some beautiful new slimline dies. This first set is called Blossoming Slimline Etched Dies, and there are four pieces to this set. You get the large slimline piece that cuts out all of these flowers. There are two different pieces on the inside, and then this large one cuts out around the slimline flowers. The second one is called Flowering Slimline Etched Dies. And again, you get four pieces, the large piece that cuts out flowers and leaves, and then two dies on the inside. It makes it very versatile for your sentiments. You can cut out a window on the inside of the die, and there's this cute stripe die. And then, of course, you get the outer piece that cuts out the whole thing. I'm going to be pairing these two dies with some other sets. This one is called Simply Perfect Mi Mix and Match Sentiments. I love these sentiments because they're big and bold. And then I'm also using the small die of the month for March. They cut out the exact same flowers that you see on this slimline die. So for my first card, I'm going to be doing a little bit of ink blending. I'm going to speed this up. I'm putting down four different colors of Distress Oxide inks, and this doesn't have to be a perfect blend, but I just wanted to put some fun color, some bright springy colors down, and then cut it out with the Blossoming Slimline die. The colors I'm using are Squeeze Lemonade, Kitsch Flamingo, Worn Lipstick, and Ripe Persimmon and they blend together beautifully. And then once this is done, I'm going to use the blossoming slimline and cut out my panel. I'll also use the die around it to cut it out. And then I can just tape this in place and run it through my die cutting machine. There are so many things you can do with this die set. For this card, I am going to cut around the flowers so that it's its own panel. I'm just being very careful to center the die around it so that it's even. Next, I'm going to put down some post-it notes. These are the full coverage sticky back. And I want to keep all of the little bits inside this die cut together. It'll make it easier to uh, paper piece this way. So I'll carefully pull up the tape, and I'm going to take the outer die off first. I'll use my all-in-one tool to poke out the flowers and press them into the post-it note paper. I am going to pull up my die cut panel as well. However, this is an instance where you probably should do as I say, and <laughs> not as I do. I found that it worked easier if I left the panel and all of its negative pieces together and then transferred them to another panel. However, it was just fun playing with this. But I'm not going to lie to you, it did take quite some time for me to paper piece this into another panel. <laughs> but it was fun. Okay, so here's my panel all cut out. I'm going to adhere this to a piece of black cardstock with a little bit of glue around the edges. I also wish that I had put a little bit of glue behind the sentiment panel and along some of the flowers to keep them down, but I just put it around the perimeter of this die cut. To cut out this black cardstock, I used the outer die as well, just so it would be a perfect match. Look how pretty that looks backed with the black cardstock. So I'm saving the pink flowers for another card and I cut it out again with just white cardstock. I left the panel and all of its pieces in the die this time and I thought that would make it a little bit easier. But the third time's the charm. I'll show you my favorite way to go about this in just a minute. But I'm going to pop out these pieces, these petals, and glue them in the flowers looks so pretty and I just put a little dot of glue and I'm using my all-in-one tool as well as my jewel picker to help me with this. 
I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing because, as I said, it did take quite some time to do this. For the leaves to these flowers, I'm going to pop them out and color them in with a green Copic marker. It just needed a little something more. So let me put this last petal piece in. And then I'll start working on a leaf to show you what I did. Oh, and I also popped out the little center pieces and just kept them white. There's so much you could do with this set. You could even just cut out a panel and put it over some beautiful pattern paper or cardstock, and you could be done just by doing that. So I'm going to color these in with a Copic marker. And then I'll just paper piece them in where they belong. But I, I like this little pop of green that this provides. I'm sure there'll be lots of beautiful inspiration from other card crafters using this new set. Okay, so let me show you a little bit of a close up here. And then I'll go and do the rest of it off camera. And here it is all done. Isn't that just stunning? For my second card, I went ahead and paper pieced most of the Distress Oxide pieces into this white panel. Look how pretty that looks. I have a little bit more to do on that. But I wanted to show you my favorite way, <laughs> the fastest way I think there is to do this. So I have my panel die cut already and I flipped it upside down. I'm going to press the post it note paper into it. I'm going to peel up the die very carefully. I'll use the all-in-one tool again to pop out the little inner bits. Let me speed this up for you. And now I can pull up the die. And this time I'm just going to leave it in the panel. I did use some twisted citron on this panel and I'm just going to pull these leaf pieces out again so that the leaves are green. And this was so much easier. I just picked up the pieces with my all-in-one tool. Well, first I put the glue down, then I pick up the pieces, and then I can just quickly pop them into place. So this third time was a charm for me. It just worked out the best, but there might be other ways that you come up with that are even better. I wanted to paper piece the little buds, but I wanted them to be darker. So I'm adding some tumbled glass over them. This makes a beautiful bluish green color. And again, it helped to have it in the die. So it kind of holds it in place. And now I can pop these out. These were a little more challenging because they're so small. <laughs> but this card is really something special that you'll want to send to someone you really like. <laughs> it's because you did put so much time into it. Now I want to work on the sentiments. And I die cut the sentiments with some black cardstock twice and glued them together. I want these to be substantial and I want them to be really shiny. I'm holding onto them with a little piece of tape and I pressed some Versamark ink over them. Now I can add some clear embossing powder. So here's another instance of do as I say and not as I do. The first time I'm using a tape to hold these die cuts in place, but the second time I used some cardstock and a little bit of dot liner and it worked much better. So I poured over the embossing powder and then I melted it. And then while it was still hot, I poured over some more and then I can melt it again. I did this a total of three times on each die cut. But if you want, you can let them cool in between and press more of the Versamark ink onto it and just do it that way. These turn out so puffy and shiny. They're a major element on your card and it just looks beautiful. And then once these have cooled, I can peel them off the tape and here they are. I had a little bit of melted embossing powder 
hanging onto the edge so I can just kind of peel that off. But that was fun to do. Now let's put these cards together. You could put these sentiments right over the space where the sentiment's supposed to go and not do anything else, but I wanted to add a little touch of color there. I mean, it looks beautiful just with the white, but I'm going to cut out this inner piece, and I already added some Distress Oxide inks over it. I used the Twisted Citron and the Tumbled Glass. Then I'm just going to put this down flat with some dot liner. I just like this little touch of color that it gives to it. These sentiments I did go ahead and emboss with clear embossing powder three times. So they're nice and shiny. The camera doesn't pick up the shine, but they are really pretty and shiny. And then I can just glue these down with little dots of liquid glue. I really love this sentiment set. And I like how on the birthday, the little dot and the eye is attached to the T, so you don't have to worry about the little dot. <laughs> I went ahead and put some clear crystals over the dots around the panel and attached it to a card base made of persimmon cardstock. I think that would be a birthday present in and of itself right there. Okay, the second card, I'm putting down the sentiment just right onto the panel this time. I didn't want to color, cover up all of that beautiful color. So again, I'm just putting little dots of glue behind the die cuts and holding them down. For the little dots along this card, I'm going to use some confetti pieces. These are just clear confetti pieces. And just add some really fun sparkle to the cards. I put one on every single dot. And this second card I'm going to attach to a black card base. The card bases are eight and a half by three and a half. Um, and they have quite a border on them. So if you wanted to make these slimline cards a little bit smaller, you definitely could. But here is a close-up look at this card. For my third card, I'm going to be using the flowering slimline etched dies. And I cut this out with some silver fox cardstock from Spellbinders. This is just a beautiful gray cardstock. And this one's more delicate, I'd say, than the first one. So I'm just being careful to punch out all of the little intricate pieces. There are some other dies, some slimline dies in this release. If you're interested in looking at those, I'll list them in the description box below. But here it is all punched out. Isn't that just delicate and pretty? I'm going to work on my sentiment and it's going to say thank you. This time I attach them to a piece of scrap cardstock with a little bit of dot liner. This was so much easier than the tape. <laughs> so I'll press my Versamark ink over the die cut. And then I can pour over my clear embossing powder. I'm going to use a little piece of cardstock to catch it this time. Then I can kind of tap it on the table with the cardstock attached to it. Makes it a lot more stiff and easy to use. I'll melt the powder. And this time I'm just going to allow them to air dry. And then I'll press more Versamark ink into them. and pour over the embossing powder. I only did this twice this time. And now I can melt the embossing powder. It goes really fast. And then these just peel off the cardstock very easily. But look how pretty those are. And they're quite stiff, so I'm trying to bend the cardstock so I don't bend the die cut. To attach this panel to its backing, I'm just carefully using some dot liner. 
going right over the flowers and the edges. You could, of course, just use more liquid adhesive to do this, but I just wanted to try the dot liner. I don't like the glue oozing out. <laughs> and I'm going to attach this to a white card base, and the gray and the white just look really pretty together. I like the divots in the corners too. I think that's a cute touch. So let's attach it to the white cardstock. And then I went ahead and die cut all of the flowers from March's Small Die of the Month kit. And here they are all cut out and ready to attach to my slimline panel. Let's pick those up and put those away. I cut them out with pink sand and dahlia. The new cardstocks from Spellbinders are just gorgeous. I'm having so much fun using them on my cards. But I'll put a little dab of glue down. And the flower just fits perfectly over the flowers on this panel. And then I will speed this up and I'll show you the whole process of this. It was just fun seeing it in fast motion. <laughs> All of these little flowers appearing on this panel. But I really love the delicate colors of this card. I was debating whether to put some kind of sparkle or sequins on top of the flowers, but I decided just to leave it a little more simple. Here it is all done. I do add a few leaves across this panel as well. For the sentiment, I'm going to glue down a piece of the Dahlia cardstock. And then I cut out the pink sand with the diagonal stripes die. I'll glue this piece down flat as well. I like these little inner pieces. They make the cards look so cute. I'm just putting little dots behind this. This just fits perfectly over the pink die cut, or the dark pink die cut, I should say. And now for the sentiment. Look how cute that looks over the diagonal stripes. I love florals and diagonal stripes together. For my card base this time, I used some Dahlia cardstock. And it's another 8.5 by 3.5 slimline. And here is a close-up look. I think this one is my favorite of the three, and it was the easiest to do. <laughs> but these were so much fun to put together. I'll have all of the links to these products listed below and over at my blog. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.